Good morning everyone. Welcome to our reading comprehension lesson which is based around poetry. The ally today is to answer literal and inference questions. Before we start you know the routine. You need a pencil or pen and a paper or a book and you are in control of the pause button. So if you need to pause do so. Restart when you need to. Let's start our quiz for this morning. Which of the following is an example of simile? Now you can write one, two, three or four. So which of the following is an example of simile? Hiss, slurp, hush, scream, mom. Hopping hens shop for shoes. My hand is as cold as snow. The, sh the shirt said wear me. Number two. Which of the following is an example of alliteration? My hair is a vast forest. I sat by the river. I lived by the sea. I died by the lake. Plants are like legs. Dogs dodge digging dandelions. Remember, write one, two, three or four. We are going to mark these once we've completed them. Which of the following is an example of metaphor? Talking turtles torture teachers. I am a cloud. The dog smiles at me. Meow, woof, tweet, went the animals. So remember, is it one, two, three or four? Which of the following is an example of alliteration? The TV laughed at the desk. Calculating computers catch cats. Pictures are captured people. Crash, bang, boom goes the lion. Which one is it? One, two, three or four? Number five. Which of the following is an example of metaphor? The glasses smiled at me. Cute cats chase toys. Snow is like the sun. My life is a dream. Which one is a metaphor? One, two, three or four. And the last one, number six. Which of the following is an example of onomatopoeia? The trunk winked at me. The cat was as mad as a tree. Lazy lizards lounge. Whisper slap smack I hear in the lunchroom. So it's one, two, three or four. Some people may have paused the pause button in between, but I think this is more straightforward. So writing one, two, three or four is probably easier than trying to, is definitely easier than trying to write the whole sentence. So let's mark these now just to see how well you've done, because these are devices or parts of poetry that we've dealt with often. So simile. It's not hiss or slurp. Hopping hens shop for shoes. That's alliteration. My hand is as cold as snow. It's definitely that one because it has as in it. So number three. Number two, which of the following is an example of alliteration? So you need to look which number has all the words starting with the same sound or letter. And it's number four, dogs, dodge, digging, dandelions. Number three, which of the following is an example of metaphor? Is it one, two, three or four? It is number two. The person has been compared to a cloud, a cloud, sorry. Number four, which of the following is, is an example of alliteration? Well, this one is number two because all the words start with the same sound or letter. Calculating computers catch cats. Number five, which of the following is an example of metaphor? So remember you're comparing two things. Two things that are not alike. Do you think you got this one? It's number four. My life is a dream. Someone's life has been compared to a dream, which means they're having a wonderful life if it's if it's a dream. 
And number six, which of the following is an example of onomatopoeia? Remember, these are sounds that copy the action or activity. So it's number four, whisper, slap, smack, I hear in the lunchroom. So how did you do in, in that activity? Were you good at this quiz? So it is out of six. How many did you get correct? Let's move on. OK, we have here today a new poem and it's called The Zoo. And we're continuing with our animal theme. We've done quite a few poems now related to animals, which um, is important because I'm just really trying to find an area that you become more confident with. You have good knowledge about different animals. So therefore, when it comes to reading and writing, you have a good sound background to help you to understand what you're reading. And it also helps you to, to write more easily. So I'm going to read the zoo. I thought it rather strange today when visiting the zoo to find the creatures living there are just like me and you. So wild and ac acrobatic, the monkeys in their cage, the light and swinging high and low, performers on a stage. Dignified and tall, the penguins on the ice, waiters in their black and white, proper and precise. Gazelles turn together, a troop of graceful dancing girls, synchronised and slender, performing plies, jumps and twirls. Poor zebras are the prisoners, condemned for life, you know. Their classic uniform of stripes truly marks them so. If I had all day, I'd surely make some other metaphors for sloths and tigers, elephants and even dinosaurs. And that's our poem for today, all about animals in the zoo. Now these animals are being compared to people or people's jobs. So this is where the metaphors come in. So a metaphor is when you compare two things that are not alike. So you can see the words coloured in orange. If you go to verse 2, you've got the monkeys. The monkeys are being compared to performers on a stage. Monkeys are not performers on a stage, but it's a way of showing the qualities that they have. And if we go to verse 3, in orange, we've got the word penguins, and in the second line, we have the word waiters. Penguins are being compared to waiters. Penguins are not waiters, but they're compared to the waiters because penguins are black and white. And waiters in some restaurants wear a suit or clothing that's black and white. And if we go to verse number five, We've got zebras in orange, or zebras in orange, and we have the word on the right-hand side, prisoners. Zebras are being compared to prisoners. Now, why would the zebras be compared to prisoners? I'm not going to tell you exactly why, but it is in that verse. So, if you can imagine what a zebra looks like, what colour are they? Do they have a certain pattern that you remember? Because remember, metaphors and similes help create a picture in the reader's mind. So think about the colour of the zebra, the pattern that the zebra has on its body, and then you can understand better why zebras are compared to prisoners. And the same goes for penguins. Now, if penguins, some penguins are black and white, and because they are black and white, they're compared to waiters, because waiters wear uniforms or clothing that are black and white, like a black pair of trousers and a white shirt. And monkeys are compared to performers because monkeys are very acrobatic. They're very good at swinging, jumping, climbing, and doing all those kinds of things. So they are great performers, a bit like 
trapeze artists or acrobats in the circus. And then under metaphors we've got rhyme. In each verse there are words that rhyme and I've got in verse 1 zoo and you. Now that helps with the rhythm of the poem. So when I read when visiting the zoo to find the creatures living there are just like me and you. And you can look for other rhyming patterns in the other verses. So look very carefully. Those are things that you need to check. Structure. What does this poem look like? What's the shape of this poem? Well, the shape is the poem has six verses. And in each verse, there are four lines. Those are things that you can think about. Punctuation. Don't know if you noticed, but there are only commas and full stops. Now the punctuation here, on the, at the end of the first line there's a comma. At the end of the second line there's a comma. At the end of the third line there's a comma. And then on the last line, that's line four, there's a full stop. Now that pattern is repeated throughout the poem. Why is that important? Well, it controls me, the reader, as to how quickly I can read the poem. Because the poet wants the listener to be able to fully understand what the poem is about. So if I read this too quickly, you may not hear the important information in each line. So the punctuation controls how quickly or how slowly I read. And controlling that speed is important because the listener needs to be able to understand what is being said or read out. Okay, there are some words that you may not be familiar with. So I've got acrobatic. If you're not sure, you might know what an acrobat is. They're a bit like a, someone who does very good gymnastics. They do stunts, very good at balancing, swinging, and they're skillful. And they've got very skillful movement. And that's important because if you are up on a high wire or up very high above the ground on some kind of swing or rope, you need to be very skilled because you don't want to be falling off. That would be disastrous. So the monkeys, if you've been to the zoo, if you've seen them on television, you know that the monkeys are very acrobatic. They're very skillful when it comes to swinging, climbing, jumping, balancing, and so on. The second word there that you may not be familiar with in verse 3 is dignified. Dignified means to look impressive or be very proud and grand. So the penguins are being, being described as being dignified, grand, almost like a king or a queen. So they're like royalty, so very royal. And then the third word, troop, in verse 4. A troop is a group or a band. It could be a group of people doing gymnastics. It could be a band playing in a concert. It could be a cast or a group of actors or dancers. And that's another word for if you have a group of actors or dancers, you could call them a troupe. And then the fourth word, synchronized, is in verse 4 as well. So synchronized means to do everything together. So everything's in time. The group are working side by side and as a unit. So they look very professional when they do things. So the gazelles are described as being synchronized and slender. If you don't know what the word slender means, it means to be very thin or trim. And then the last word, condemned, which is in verse 5. If someone is condemned, it means that they're doomed or convicted. If you commit a crime and it's very serious, then people who do who commit a serious crime go to court and then the judge will convict them, which means that they will possibly go, okay. go to, this on the web they will possibly go to jail. Sorry about that. That was Siri 
asking him or saying something. Don't know why. Okay, let's move on. So we're going to now look at the strategies. We had this last week or yesterday. So strategies for reading comprehension. Sometimes you need to need to read the question twice. If you don't understand it to begin with, read it again. And if you need to read it again, do so. And remember the three W's, who, what, where. Who's in that verse? What are they doing? Where are they? All of those things are questions that you should be asking yourself as you're reading. Who's involved in this verse? What are they doing and where are they? Or who are the other characters in the verse? What is that character being compared to if we're thinking about metaphors? Now, once again, you have to find the right page or section. In this case, you need to find the right verse. So remember, we talked about skimming and scanning. If you have one word in the question, then you can search for that one word. So if you're looking for penguin, that's the only word you're going to pay attention to. So you can skim through the verses to find the word penguin or gazelle. So you move quite quickly. Whereas if you scan, you're looking for quite a bit of information so it takes longer if you're scanning. Okay, so make sure that you go to the right place. So we've just covered skimming and scanning as well at the same time. And read around the information. Sometimes you get questions where the answer is not in the text. So you have to think about what's happening in the verse. Why is it happening? Who's taking part? What are they doing? Where are they? And then you put all that information together to answer the question where the answer is not in the text, so it's not literal. And the next one, write down the answer. But once you've written down the answer, it helps if you check. Does your answer make sense? Let's move on. Okay, so here's our poem. I've color-coded the verses so that you don't get them mixed up. So we go verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So in verse 1, it's introducing the visit to the zoo. Verse 2, well I can see monkeys in verse 2, so this verse is about the monkeys and they're being compared to someone or something. And in verse 3, that verse is about the penguins and so on. So look for some key words when you're reading the questions. So what are the questions? What did the poet find strange when visiting the zoo? So zoo is the key word. You would skim for the word zoo and you'd know you need to look in verse 1. Number 2. Which words rhyme in verse 2? I told you about two words that rhyme in verse 1. Zoo and you. Is that pattern going to be repeated anywhere else? Well, number three, is rhyme used in any other verses? So you need to check in one, three, four, five, and six, does that rhyme pattern occur in the other verses? Because in verse one, the rhyme take, takes place between line number two and line number four. But line one and three, the words at the end do not rhyme. So this is a structured poem, it's not free verse. Where are the monkeys? So monkeys is the key word. Search for the word monkeys, you'll find the correct verse to get your information from. So that's literal, look in verse two. Number five, why are the monkeys called performers? Well, you know what a performer is, so why are the monkeys called performers? Number six, colour the penguin in based on what is written in the poem. So you need to look in verse three. If you were to colour your penguin in, don't know if you can sketch that on your piece of paper or in your book without having to download it. That would be fine, so colour that penguin in. So use the information in the text to help you colour the penguin in. 
you might want to Google an uh, image of a penguin just to make sure you color it, color it in the right way. Let's move on. Number seven, what are the penguins compared to? Well, we had a bit of a, a discussion about that before. So how are the gazelles described in verse four? How are the gazelles described in verse four? Once again, you've got a, a key word gazelle, so you can skim for that and find it in gazelles in the correct verse. Number nine, write down the phrase that has alliteration in verse four. Now, hopefully from the quiz and all the other quizzes that we've done and all the other discussions we've had, you can identify alliteration very quickly now. So I won't go over alliteration because all the poems I've seen so far, everyone has been able to produce a, a phrase with alliteration. Number 10, why does the poet feel sorry for the zebras? Why does the poet feel sorry for the zebras? Number 11, draw the pattern the zebras have on their uniform. So you have to draw a little pattern. Don't know whether you, you don't want to try and draw a zebra. Now uh, that'd be quite complicated, but if you want to, you could try it. Um, you could just draw the pattern in the box. What is the pattern on the zebra's uniform? So once again, you have to imagine what the pattern on a zebra is like. This is part of the reading process. So can you see a, a zebra in your mind? Can you remember the pattern they have on their body? And number 12, this is your last question or activity. Use a metaphor to compare the tiger, elephant, dinosaur or any other animal to a person or person's job. Right, so this is reading around the information. There's no information here about tiger, elephant or dinosaur or any other animal that's not mentioned in the poem. So you have to create your own metaphor and compare it to a person or person's job. So we've got, for instance, the monkeys compared to that is all compared to like a performer or acrobat and the penguins to a waiter. So you try and create your own metaphor, select one of the animals and then write a metaphor comparing your animal to a human or a human's job. Right, so let's move on. So once you've done that, remember that you need to email your work to yr3 at grange.harrow.sch.uk. I look forward to seeing your work. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.